Hello, Galaxy. I'm Chris Perillo, and I'm about to react to Computer Basics, which was a VHS tape that I recorded back in. Hang on, what year? What year was this? What VHS was still a thing. This cost twenty-five bucks U.S., thirty-eight ninety-nine Canadian, seventeen ninety-nine net U.K. Whatever the hell that means. Uh, it was about like a little over an hour long, and I don't know. I don't know when this was done. Two thousand two. Seriously, they did not put the year anywhere. I guess it's timeless. Whatever's in this video, which is also on YouTube, and that's what I'm going to be watching, is apparently still relevant today, including Windows XP. So that's me and Kate Patello. I didn't have a chance to work with her all that often, but I, I tell you, I wish I could have. That is one of my biggest regrets because I felt we worked very well together. It was an amazing day. The entire thing was shot in, well, not a full 24 hours, but basically wh whatever it was, like eight hours, 10 hours. I mean, because you have to take multiple takes, you have to go through things. And I remember towards the end, and I don't know if we're going to get to this point in the actual reaction that I'm about to do, but I remember towards the end of the script, we kind of phoned it in. So if you have a copy of the VHS tape, you know, all two people who bought this, I was clearly one of them. They didn't even give one to me. Anyway, the content at the beginning of the video was a little more rock solid than towards the end. I, I just remember that happening. We didn't care by the time we got to the end. I'm like, no, no one's really paying attention to settings and shutting down and security and email and instant messaging. <laughs> Flashes in the pan. So for those of you who are not acutely aware, I used to host a television program two decades ago, 20 years ago. That was after I started Locker Gnome and was distributing computer information to hundreds of thousands of people online, and certainly before YouTube was a thing. Okay, I don't know how the kids react these days, but I'm gonna do my best. <gasps> Quay. Q? Every day, technology is part of your life. Now there's Tech TV, a new television network all about technology. So I'm going to stop Tech TV right there. The entire network was not all about technology. Technology was certainly the foundation of it, absolutely. But it wasn't necessarily rooted in tech as much as it was in the beginning of Tech TV and its roots, ZDTV. News and breakthroughs, games, music, health, and the hottest new products. A new network for a new world. You love technology? We know how you feel. So, again, I'm going to interrupt Tech TV, this commercial that I was in. Oddly enough, I was in a ZDTV commercial before getting the opportunity to be a guest on the screensavers over webcam. I remember seeing the option for anybody to like record something on their webcam or netcam, whatever we called them back in the day, because like only like 10 people had them at the time. You could say, hey, I watch ZDTV, and then they'd put you in a commercial. And so I was actually in a ZDTV commercial long before Tech TV even was a thing. I was definitely right there when everything was fresh and new with the internet. It was just, it was a very exciting time. But the thing about what they just said is a little off because there were certainly hundreds of people at Tech TV who worked there who loved technology. Absolutely. I'm not going to deny that, but not everybody did. And I'm not convinced that everybody who was in the upper echelon understood or loved technology the same way those of us who, who might have been on camera loved technology. And that, I feel, was pretty obvious in the decisions that were made with the network. I'm very grateful for the time that I had with it. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. It was, it was an amazing two-year run for me. When you create content for a specific audience, the people who are driving it tend to get that audience. Everybody else may not, but you need the everybody else. You do. It's a team effort. It's a group effort. So that's not me slagging the upper echelon or those who may not have been geeks because you need talent that's not just on camera but that makes the whole machine work. That's that's teamwork. Tech TV, television about technology. Hello, I'm Chris Perilla from Tech TV show Call for Help. Every day I guide people much like yourselves through the wonderful world of computing. And I'm Kate Patella. We're excited that you're joining us. Now, over the next hour, we hope to supply you with everything you need to know to get started with your new computer. Now, even if you're not completely new to computers, but you're still a little green, this video should get you clicking like a pro in no time. That's right. Computers can open up a world of endless possibilities, but we know it can be overwhelming at first and sometimes scary. So we're going... So 
Back then, keep in mind, Windows XP had just been released. Like, it was brand new. The thing that we think about is antiquated. The save icon, right? The floppy disk. Kids these days don't know what that is, right? It's this weird shape and they've got no association and in many ways technology was scary it wasn't as pronounced or prevalent uh, or prolific as it is today. wow that's a lot of peas so you may laugh and think who would ever buy a vhs tape teaching them computer basics but there was a big market or should have been for something like this i'm going to take you step by step through the whole process by then you'll be prepared to go it alone let's take a quick look at some of the things we'll be covering in this video First up, we'll show you how to plug everything, including your digital camera and printer, into your computer, if you have them. Then we'll take you through some basic interactions, like starting up the computer and using your mouse. Okay, you gotta tell me, is my voice higher pitched now? <laughs> or was it back then? Because honestly, I'm still waiting for my other testicles to descend. Then I'm going to guide you through all the different sections of your screen and teach you about... Oh, sorry. ...about the Windows operating system. Plus, we'll show you how to install new software and how to uninstall it when you no longer need it. And we'll cover how to open and use programs and then how to edit and alter files. Then we'll show you everything you ever wanted to know about the internet. How to get connected, how to surf the web, how to search, and how to use... Whoa, Chris, you're telling us that you, me, are going to teach everybody everything they need to know about the internet? Yes, that's how big the internet was, okay? There were like... Four websites. Use email. Now then we're gonna talk security and a few steps that you can take to make sure your computer is connected. And last but not least, we'll show you how to properly shut down your computer without using the power button. All this and- Shut down the computer without using the power button? Is this sorcery? More as we guide you through the world of computer basics. Before you can get started using your computer, you need to know a few things about how your computer works, what things are called, and where they're located. Now, don't worry, you don't need to know every single intimate detail, but it's really helpful if you at least have a grasp on the very basics. That way, if you ever have to call somebody and ask for help, you actually know what they're talking about and won't sound like a whole lot of gibberish. So, let's get moving. My ever so technically talented co-host has everything we need to get started right here. Yeah, this is great. Look at all the cords and the cables and the stuff that we have laying here on the table all the computer and all of its parts sitting right here not to mention all the other gadgets that we've got they've all got to be hooked up you know don't worry it's not all that bad not that complicated this computer like all computers consists of many specialized components which work together to let you run programs to surf the web write documents send email so on and so forth and these components are defined by their function which makes it easy Basically, any component. You know, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm flashing back. I do remember that day. I really do. That was early in the morning when we, we started because we did it in a linear capacity. We hit the outline it's listed here on the copy of the VHS tape, which I'm not going to let go of because it's shrink wrapped and everything. I was excited about cable. I mean, we had a script, but I, there's no way I was ever that excited about cables. Uh, it's just not going to happen. But remember, back then, wireless was brand new. It wasn't a thing. I think Wi-Fi had just begun to be a thing. And that was exciting, certainly. But I, I just, man... Just watching this again, I got to tell you, it was fun to do, you know, before I get too far into this. And we're not going to react to the entire hour long episode, but I will say if people like this type of reaction, I'll see if I can dig up other call for help episodes that I hosted and react to those too. Shorter, but you know, I may have memories. You never know. Uh, I don't know. What was the memory back then? Were we still using Sims or Dims? Speaking of memory, uh, that's the computer memory back then for all you youngins who weren't even born when YouTube came into existence. I've done a lot over all this time, but I remember being so happy to do what I did. I, I felt like I was in my groove and I was comfortable. I, I've always been comfortable in front of the camera with a microphone. It's it's not even close to being a stress. If I could do one thing for the rest of my life, it would be this. And I have done that as a part of my life, not necessarily all of my life, but you know, I, I, I was always happy for that, you know, the opportunity. And I found my own groove. I was substantially younger. I was in my twenties. Uh, definitely do not know or did not know as much then as I do now, or at least I'd like to believe that, but we're never going to see another tech TV. It's just never going to happen. And I'm happy to be a part of your memories, but I remember what I felt when I did this or something like this, and uh, I loved it. 
you know, the only thing I, I, I would have changed would have been my hair, man. This I look like a freaking microphone with the, you know, the, 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 what is it? Is it the windshield? This thing, this thing right here. What do they call that? The mic foam? <laughs> Clearly, I have lost my my uh, my technical know-how. <laughs> these, these terms escape me. In my day, <laughs> we had to gum our way through these terms. But the thing is, Google was just beginning. Like many hosts had to know certain things before we went on the air. I just wanted to say, you know, I felt like that, that, that segment there was me in my element. And uh, I'm happy to have done that. Outside your computer's case is usually called a peripheral. Now, if you plan on adding accessories to your computer, this is a term you're going to hear often. Peripherals include things like your printer, your scanner, speakers, and all these items that you see right here. Peripherals are often broken down into two types, input and output. Input peripherals let you enter or input information into your computer. Pretty simple. For example, when you move the computer's mouse and click its buttons with your fingers, you control what the computer is doing. The same goes for your keyboard, joysticks, and whatever else you may have. Now, I got to interrupt myself again just to point out I never stopped talking with my hands. It's it's in me. I mean, it's just in me. I'm looking at my hand gestures. Y'all are maybe listening to what it was that I'm saying, but I'm watching my hands just move all around. And I'm telling you, the more things change, the more things stay the same. I still very much use my hands. And I'm pretty sure that people who watch me on TV you know, might have used a, a certain finger gesture. But let's not talk about that. Output peripherals handle the information that comes out from your computer. So we're talking about items like your monitor, speakers, and your printer. Now, that's the outside of the unit. Now components located inside your computer are usually named specifically for what they are. So when information is input into your computer, it needs components to process the information. This is where your processor comes into play. Your processor is like the brain of the unit. It does the thinking. And it's often referred to as the CPU or central processing unit, the brain. It determines what you want and then commands your computer accordingly. Now the CPU is measured in speed, megahertz, or gigahertz. Basically, this is just how fast your computer processes your requests and moves information in your computer. Exactly. You know, even in listening to what Kate just said there, that was so heavy. That's heavy. And in a day and age when these devices were just very um, mired in esoterics, I can only imagine how overwhelmed someone might have been in listening to the script. And I feel that this is this was really one of the, the largest struggles we might have had really dumbing it down, making it so simple. And so we would use analogies, you know, comparisons, you know, trying to make and relate the information in such a way that people could understand. That sounded really wordy, but I know what we were going for. And we always, at least the people that I worked with, always thought about our audience always thought about who was listening, what we were trying to do. Uh, because sometimes I would think so geeky, I'd be way out there and I'd have to get way, way, way back, especially for a more novice audience like the audience that came to call for help, at least when, when I was hosting it. And once the CPU receives the command from a program, it needs a place to store the information it processes. The fastest storage medium in your computer is known as RAM or random access memory. When you run a program on your computer, the CPU stores the information the program needs in memory. Now, more RAM generally means your computer runs more efficiently, even faster. For long-term storage, your computer uses a hard drive. The average hard drive is about 20 gigabytes, which is a lot. Now, as you add program... Wow! 20 whole gigabytes! That's like, what, two photos these days? <laughs> That's how long ago this was. Just to contextualize, what would have been uh, the average RAM configuration? Would it have been maybe 8 gigs, 16? Or were, were we beyond that at that point? I'd, I'd have to look it up. I've, I've lost a lot of that, like in terms of my memory. Programs and store files, you use up your hard drive space. So later in this video, we'll show you how to check how much open hard drive space you have. This is really important to know if you plan on adding software applications like games and you will. Oh, definitely. Wait, 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 wait. Did I just say eight gigs of RAM or eight megs of RAM? Because back then we were, I believe, still dealing with megs, not gigs. Did I say, did I say gigs or did I say megs? These were the megs days. So gigs were just... <laughs> Like, because you got to have games on your computer, and your information can also be stored on or come from CDs, which your computer reads in its CD-ROM drive. If your computer has a CD-RW drive, or what's also known as a burner, you can also copy information to the CD. 
Now let's not forget about the floppy disk. Floppy disks are another type of storage, but they're becoming a little outdated and the disks aren't even floppy anymore. And they- Dude, I was talking smack on floppy disks even then. So that's how long floppy disks have stuck around and that's the save icon right there. That's it for all you kids who are paying attention to old folks like me. it. We were trying to get rid of these things, trust me, but we couldn't. They kept mailing it to us, right? You know, we, we thought we were done every time I thought I'm out. They pull me back in. I'm probably misquoting the Godfather part three, but uh, yeah. Go no. back and it's kind of like a puzzle like you used to put together as a kid. You got to find the right place for it and here it is. Here's where my video card is. That's what I plug my monitor into and I'm going to gently push it in there tighten the thumb screws next I need to have some sound come coming out of my computer so I need to connect my wait, wait, wait. I gotta look something up right now because weren't thumb screws like a medieval to torture thing <laughs> hang on just a second thumb screws medieval oh my god oh shit Oh my god! The thumb screw was a torture device used in medieval Europe to crush a person's fingers or thumbs. <laughs> I don't think computing was that painful. <laughs> wow. Um. Mm. <laughs> speakers. Ooh, look Doctor? at my speaker. Thank you so much. This is almost like a forcep, but not really. This is my speaker cable, and you notice it's colored this nice hospital. We did a little riffing. That's one of the reasons why I would love to work with Kate in any capacity again, because we, we, we did well. And that's the thing is we all have different personalities, different personas, and some, some, some of them mix well, some of them don't. But I had a genuine good time with Kate on set in this video that we recorded. I always enjoyed making those types of connections. So I'm very grateful to have found a colleague, coworker, a co-host who I could bounce off of and, and have fun. And, and Kate's certainly, you know, not the only one. Little green. Boy, I'm just sticking with the doctor theme right there. Now color coded. I'm going to see if my back of the computer here is that it? No, nope. that green's a little darker. Let's move a little. Oh, look at that. Look at the port right there. It's also that nice colored green, so I'm going to stick it in right in there, right in the back of the computer. Ours has a little picture next to it. It's hard to see. But stick it in. Quoting Margaret show. Believe me, it's right there. And of course, it's color coded green, so you don't have to worry about anything. Now, as for your mouse and the keyboard, they both use what's known as a PS2 connector. These are slotted and... PS2? <laughs> I'll wait for the PS4, thank you very much. Wait, are we up to PS5? I'll wait for the... <laughs> 6. So they only connect one way. You just have to find the round connector and then line up the pegs and plug them in. Of course, this one's also handily color-coded, so we'll do that. Now, another type of connection is what's known as USB. Usually, there are two of them. Here's a USB plug side by side. So here is our USB port right here. Now, USB or universal serial bus connectors are long and thin. They only fit together one way. It just goes right in or it doesn't. 20 years later, we are still dealing with USB type A ports. I don't know if we're ever going to eliminate those. We did eliminate the floppy disk, so maybe there's hope for eliminating uh, USB-A ports. Most only fit one way. If you're lucky, a peripheral may come with multiple cables, so if you're out of USB ports or your parallel ports, you can use whatever connection that you have available. Here's a troubleshooting tip for you. Now, there's a chance you might accidentally switch and connect your keyboard and your mouse into the wrong ports. Now, if this happens, the computer gets all messed up and neither one of them works. Now, don't worry, you didn't break it. Just turn the computer off and switch the cables around, then turn it back on. Now moving to the front of the computer that has several buttons and indicator lights. Thank you so much, Kate. You do that so well. Now the power button is self-explanatory. Just push it to turn your computer on, but don't turn your computer off by pushing the power button. We'll show you how to do that a little later in the video. Now near the power button, you may- Do you understand how unintuitive technology was? To turn the computer off, we had to explain to people, don't press the power button because that was not the way to turn it off. But unfortunately, you know, or at least people knew, users, that when you needed to turn it on, you press the power button. That was not the best way to turn off the computer. These days, I don't know if anybody ever turns anything off. They have a power reset button. It's usually smaller than your power button, and it'll reset power to your computer's components. Push this button only as a last resort. It's kind of like a panic button. Now, your CD-ROM drive and the floppy disk have eject buttons, but uh, so you can, you know, push the disk right out of the drive. Now, if your drive gets stuck and won't eject, you can take something small like a paper clip, and you see this little hole right here? Not all drives have these, but a lot of them do. Just push it right in, where to go? Right up here. Right in that tiny little hole. 
Now you may also have a headphone jack here for headphones and a volume dial. You can use this when you're listening to a CD in the CD-ROM drive through headphones. Now here are some basic troubleshooting tips again. Always line up your cables before you plug them in. Also, avoid using your main power button to shut down the computer. Now everything is ready. Let's turn on our computer and see what happens. Oh man, it's been all this time and we haven't even booted up the computer. Dude, okay, I, I don't know if you remember any of this. I remember some of it. Happy to keep reminiscing, absolutely, but I gotta know, like, do you want me to reminisce? on this and this was a great video thank you for participating in, in whatever way that you possibly could and it, even if you're just sitting there watching the screen going what the hell did i just watch at this point i'm going to leave you to your own devices